Thank you, Father. You're amazing. <laughs> From glory to glory. Amen? Amen. Yes. God, we just thank you for what you've already done in the heavenlies. And we call them to earth today as we just say together, Father, our Father, <laughs> who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive those debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. So, Lord, we just receive heaven to earth this morning. We receive the blessings from heaven. We receive the correction. We receive the reset. We receive the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, take the word out by the Spirit of the living God that each one of us hears it in our own language. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. But there's just times and seasons in our life, and this is our time and our season today, amen, for fresh word. And so, um, so anyways, a couple people said, well, the fire's here. You didn't bring the fire. Well, first of all, don't get offended because the fire needs to roar. Amen. And you're right, the fire is here. It's always been here, and God brings things to equip the fire. And when he brings in dry sticks, the fire will roar. So sometimes we come in a little dry and you get pulled on, you get thrown onto our fire and it should roar. You understand that? But if you start joining fires, they become bigger and huger. And so as people bring fire to the body, that's amazing. I get that because I've had people come in and, and talk as though they started the fire here. Nobody started the fire here. God did when he called the river of life into existence. God is the only one that gets the glory, not a man or a woman or a church name it is the Holy Spirit Amen. moving in power moving in love moving in who he is not who we think we are but allowing him to be who he is amen yeah. and that's the difference you know and I'm not a church girl so I don't understand how other churches work and even being out in California this week it was like you know, people were like, you're so lucky. You're, it's so good that you weren't churched because you didn't have to be undone in order to be done in Christ. Amen. And it's not bad that you're church because I tell people, man, you got a foundation that maybe somebody else doesn't have. But don't be religious. One of the guys literally, you guys think I'm bad? Miss Crapola, you know, she says, crap sounds, you know, I can't believe you say crap. I say crap. She goes, but crapola's a little better. <laughs> but I say crap. And so she says crapola, and that's okay. I encountered a man that talked about, guess what? Diarrhea. <laughs> Hello. Spiritual diarrhea, religious diarrhea. People need to be flushed out from that stuff. Amen. So when I talk about the poo, and I'm nice about the poo, meet this man. He talks about it, and he gives you the motions of what it looks like to have diarrhea. And we've all been there, right? But if you're stopped up with religion, if you're stopped up with pain, if you are a grumpy Christian, you need to be flushed. Something needs to flush out your system. And I pray that you drink a bottle, not of Pepto-Bismol, not of a laxative, but the Holy Spirit, so that you can start receiving truth and get rid of all the muck that you know how, you, you all know what it feels like. Like, ah, your stomach is, you're running to the can, right? Oh, that's so bad. That's what my dad used to say, the can, right? Or the pot. I'm sitting on the pot. That's even worse because I thought it to be other things. And so I didn't want to be thinking about that pot when I was enjoying other things. You understand that? So, you know, it's these visuals that, <laughs> that you get. But anyways, let me just get off this subject because <laughs> it was so hilarious. And finally, Marcy and I look at each other and we're like, oh, he's over the top. He is over the top because it, you just should have seen the breakout in this session. But the basics of it is, and this is the one that the Lord said to bring back, this actual message, and we're going to build on it. And it came out of him preaching about joy. You see, and if you're a stopped up Christian, you are not going to be able to operate in the joy because you're all messed up. You know, the Holy Spirit is here. 
He's not here. It's not a thought in our mind. It's not something that we work out. It's something that we possess, something that we're joined to. God said, listen, Jesus said, hey, i got to go to the, my Father, but I'm going to send you the Comforter. And so when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we receive the Spirit of the living God. Amen. <laughs> That's it, too. The great I am, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he is in the business of sewage. I'm serious. We're going there. Come on. I'm gonna, <laughs> when I was in Africa and we're walking down the street, the stench is so bad because of the sewage. And they have it under the sidewalk, but there's missing pieces of the sidewalk. So there is a constant aroma coming up. What's all the fish smell? It stinks. Well, that's what stopped up Christians smell like. Amen. It's not an aroma of the Holy Spirit that we're supposed to be carrying and the joy of the Lord, but it's stench. And like I say, nobody wants to change a dirty diaper except a brand new mama, and their poop don't stink yet. It's not contaminated. It's just black and tarry. But pretty soon as they grow it, you start wanting to potty train your child. Amen. So I want to tell you that we need to be unstopped, and I love that God had already like been pouring these things in, but this is what I, he said. He said, you need to bring back this message about the joy, and we're going to build on it because you can't just preach it once and get it. It has to become a lifestyle. It has to become a renewed mind because the joy of the Lord is our strength, Amen. right? So some of us came into a pre-service this morning, and, we're, and you're watching like, man, what is going on with these people? Well, I turned it up. God said, you go home. And then before I had went out there, he said, you're going to change pre-service and you're going to change the music. We're going to go from the old worship and, and, and like we do, and we're going into the joy of the Lord. I had no idea what was he going to give me out there. Because the move of God is full of love. We know that. We have the foundation of his love. But if you're just an ordinary Christian, you're not going to draw anybody. Even if you're, oh, I'm just having a bad day. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. No, you're not. That's not what the word teaches. Amen. Because he died once for all sin. Amen. We need to take him off the cross and stop crucifying him and making excuses for our sin. Amen. And not walking in the joy of the Lord is part of that. Because we're caught up in our circumstances and we don't trust God. That he's going to see us through. That he's going to bring the change. That he's going to bring the breakthrough. We're out there trying to work it all out in our intellect. And it doesn't work. Amen. Amen. God spoke to me about specific people in this church while I was gone. I'm excited because God showed me breakthrough. And Craig is one of them. I think he's out with kids today. That's good. He doesn't need to hear it. He has to watch it now. <laughs> Craig was one of them. And I was in the back. And he said, call him out, call the men out, and the men prayed for him. I'm going to tell you, even though it looks out on the surface that we're all that, we're missing something more. God wants us to have more. He wants us to walk in a peace and a presence because what is the kingdom of heaven? Yes. It says in Romans 14, 17, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, hello, but righteousness, peace, and and joy in what? The Holy Spirit. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit today or you never met him, come and see me today. Amen. You know, like I knew God, but I didn't know that I had a father. And I knew Jesus was the son. And I knew that when I asked Jesus into my heart as a little girl, that that's what was going to get me to heaven. But I had no idea that I could live a life here on earth that was not full of depression, pills, alcohol, promiscuity, and all the other stuff that the world, we try to find fulfillment in our flesh and all these things, and none of it is fulfilling. It may be okay for a moment, but the things that come after it are horrible. Amen. You get into pornography, it follows you around because all of a sudden you'll be having a normal conversation with somebody and an image will pop in your head. You got to take that stuff and you got to throw it down. You got to cast down those imaginations. You got to repent for entertaining those images and those readings and you have to stay away from them and God will heal you and he will renew your mind. Amen. If you're in the habit of being a grumpy Christian and you're sopped up, repent. Say, Lord, flush my system. I don't want to be like this anymore. I want to be used by you. Oh, but I'm all concerned because God's using Dan more than he's using me. Oh, I, I, I'd rather sit and complain that Dewey, you know, has got more responsibility than me. Be grumpy. Who wants to be around grumpy people? I don't. I know when I'm grumpy, everybody runs. I had one bad day of warfare out there. It was Thursday morning, and it's, 
it's, it's, I had a lot of warfare before I went. I don't give the devil ground. But nonetheless, I felt it come on. And, and, I, and I was fighting it. I was like, uh-uh, I'm not going to get into my opinion. I'm not going to get into myself. I'm not going to carry this. Lord, you got me here for something. And if I get into this and this controls me when I'm here to receive from you, I'm going to miss what you have for me. That's the day that the message came forth on joy. It took me an hour and a half of pressing in with God, listening to a song called I'm in the Waiting. Now, I didn't know why I was supposed to listen to the song I'm in the Waiting, I'm in the Waiting. I'm like, God, I'm not really waiting for anything, but you want me to play this. So I kept playing it, and I kept playing it, and I kept praying, and I kept saying, I'm not going to walk in this. I am not going to let this dominate my life. I am better than this. This is not who I am. This is not who you are, and I'm not going to live in this. I'm here to receive from you, God. And if you want to use me, use me. It wasn't very long, and I'm sitting at the table, and the day before, the Lord had highlighted a couple to me. And now I switched songs. And I, I was now listening, and it was the first time listening to it, Take Over. <laughs> take Over, God. Just take over. I'm sitting there listening to take over, and I open, put, put up my head, and this couple goes, hey, hey, hey. I said, wait, can you wait a second? And I'm trying to get, dig these things out of my ears. And I said, God highlighted you to me yesterday. Now, listen, this was not a prophetic conference. This was a healing school. So that we didn't have a bunch of prophets running around prophesying over people, right? But God chose to go ahead and use me in my gifts part of the time that I was there. And so as I'm talking to this young lady and her husband, I gave him this word from the Lord. And I can't tell you what it is because I don't remember. But afterwards, they told me that they needed that word because she was recently told that she had ALS and frontal lobe dementia. And she's a young lady. God says no. God says no. See, audio is so important. The voice, clear voice of God is so important when he chooses to move through you or speak to you individually without using a person. Tune in. Listen to him because he's saying you are good. You are created good. I don't know what happened from the creation of you and who I've called you to be into existence, and I breathe life into you by my Holy Spirit. I put that life in you. You have a purpose. Now, something happened between point A and point B, but let's forget about the middle, and let's get to B, and let's get to C, and let's get to D, and let's keep going from glory to glory Amen. inside of me because in you is the kingdom of heaven. If you've received Jesus, as your Lord and Savior, you received heaven. Amen. <laughs> you received the kingdom of heaven. You don't just walk in the Holy Spirit. You got all three of them. Right? right? And if you don't know that he's a father, and just because you didn't have a father doesn't mean you don't know, you can't, you can still know him as a father. Right. You can know that. And the Holy Spirit, he's going to have his way. So you might as well give up. Amen. Because you were called by God, set apart by God for such a time as this. And it isn't okay just to be saved and live your life as a grumpy Christian. When the power of the kingdom of heaven is in you and it is righteousness, not your righteousness, his righteousness. Jehovah, seek the Lord our righteousness. He is the one that has made us righteous, which means you are not a sinner saved by grace. You are done with that. You are the glory of the kingdom of heaven who wants to move through you and bring forth his righteousness through your physical body, through your obedience to the kingdom of heaven and him alone. And it's peace. The minute you start losing your peace and you start fighting with anxiety, and I'm going to tell you, Christians fight with anxiety. They're not all there yet. But when we know the truth, the truth will make us free. And when we understand that out in us is not operation of the kingdom of heaven because we're in anxiety, don't Xanax it away. It could be the Holy Spirit because he feels like that sometimes. Sometimes he feels like anxiety. All of a sudden you start getting it shaking. You're like, man, something's happening to me. What's happening? Oh, it's you. I've experienced that. Don't Xanax that away. Don't medicate that away. Let God come in 
and change you from the inside out. Amen. Amen. Don't give life to that. Don't say this is who you are. This is what you have. Don't be in denial, but say, listen, God, you are bigger, you are greater, you are stronger, and the kingdom of heaven is in me, and peace is here. Amen. Peace. Peace I give to you, says Jesus. I'm going to leave you. You're going to be here on earth, but no excuse. Peace is yours. You can have it. Don't be letting people rain on your parade. Don't be a fire hydrant for a dog. Don't do it. Don't let them lift their legs and pee on you. That ain't okay. I'm telling you, you let the peace of God, which passes your own understanding, whoo, mind out, spirit in. You let him do it. Know in whom you believe. Know that you believe that God is bigger. Know that the Father's purpose for you is good. Know that he loves you. Know that he has forgiven you from all of your sin. Even though you're still trying to work it out in your own heart, forgive yourself now, would you please, says God. I did it. I paid the price. I knew you were going to do these things. I knew you were going to be this way. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to do that. And I still said, huh, they're worth it. Amen. You're worth it. Amen. You're my son. You're my daughter. I got a purpose for you. You don't have to live in that anymore. You don't have to live in that anymore. You don't have to live in that anymore. It's not of me, says God. Amen. I will give you all that you need. Amen. Every bit of it. Jesus came what? Jesus came what? Life and life abundantly. What did the devil come for? That's all in one verse. I just kitty wampused it. So the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's what he does. Kill, steal from you, and destroy you. If he can't kill you, that's his first plan. <laughs> and he's taken a few. But that doesn't mean he took them to hell. Because the Father knew that we needed a Savior. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on, let's not get in judgment. Let's not think that we understand. Because his peace passes our own understanding. Amen. It's a peace from heaven. It is a presence. It's a presence because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When Jesus kept saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was him. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Jesus. You got him. I got him. It's here. It's for the taking. When you start realizing that you're being stole from, when you realize that you don't want to live anymore, when you realize that you're being destroyed, it's not from God. Amen. It's not because Jesus came, but not only did he come to give us life, but life abundantly. And the abundance is him. The abundance is peace. The abundance is freedom. The abundance is joy. It's righteousness. Amen. It's gentleness. It's goodness. It's faithfulness. Well, I just can't be faithful. Yes, you can. Amen. He's here. He's here. He's there. We have to stand in who we know that we are and believe that it's real, that it's truth. You, you can't have it here. It's here. This is when you're unstoppable. This is when you're unmovable. This is when you will not agree with hell. You will agree with heaven because that's where truth comes from. Amen? Amen. And the joy of the Lord. You know, so the other part is joy. But it's in the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't possess these things. Because if, if you're not saved, you don't have these things. That's right. Joy isn't doing somersaults and hollering like you, you see me do. Joy is a presence. Amen. But it's a changing presence. Amen. People are drawn to it. The Holy Spirit's the one that draws all men unto himself. You carry that. So don't be surprised that people are being drawn to you. It's him in you. It's not me. It's him. It's not you. It's him. And see, as humans start taking God's glory and we start being all about us, oh, what? I, got, I am so gifted. No. You're not. The Holy Spirit is the gift. Amen. And the gifts that flow through us are him. Amen. When I prophesy, it's him. When he sharpens the pencil on the words that I'm giving, it's him. Amen. When we pray an impartation to somebody, it's him. Amen. When you receive a healing and Marcy prayed for you, it's him. Amen. When you get delivered from smoking, 
It's him. Amen. When you get delivered from lying, it's him. Amen. When you get over being a narcissist and walking around with a Jezebel spirit, it's him. Amen. He's the only one that can deliver you, not me. Amen. Jezebel spirit comes to shut down the move of God. It's a narcissist that wants to be involved in everything. The world calls it a narcissist, but the body of Christ calls it the spirit of Jezebel. It was after the anointing of God, and it came in to shut everything down because it wanted to be center. And if it can't be center, it will undermine it, manipulate it, and try to destroy it. But God, we've had them in this church. They've been in this church. They're in this church. But God says, I have them here to deliver them, but they got to choose. I see them. I know who they are. <laughs> I'm not fooled. I'm full of compassion and love, and I believe that what's in you is greater than what you're operating in. But ultimately, it'll come down to you making a choice, and I can't make it for you. But I'm not going to let you destroy me or destroy this ministry or the people in this ministry. I will stop you in the name of Jesus because I'm that bold. I'm that bold. I know who I am in Christ. I know in whom I believe. And I have committed myself in this body into his hands. And he is able to do and take care of it because I've given it to him. Amen. He gave it to me. I give it back. What has he given to you? Have you given it back to him? Have you said, thank you, God, this is an amazing gift. God, thank you for the praise and worship ability. Thank you for the words. Thank you for what you're doing in my life. But now I'm going to give it back to you, and I'm going to lift it up to you because it has to be all about you, God. I know that you've given me this gift and this ability, but it's still got to be you. Right. You know, one of my greatest uh, things that happened, uh, happened to Marcy and I, and it was the last day, and, and um, we were outside, and we get introduced to another couple from down in, in Texas, and they're actually a pastor and his wife, and um, their church is called River of Life Church. <laughs> yeah, of all things. So here we're sitting at the table, right? And so we, we just kind of talked and ate lunch together. It was really neat. And so then Marcy and I were kind of deciding, okay, we're going to, that's the end of the, the conference, okay, this is our plans, and we're sitting inside. And so they, they come in, and they had went up to the prayer chapel, and um, so they had come in, and I, I seen them beeline, and I'm like, oh, they're, they're like in search here, and I, I knew they were coming. And so um, Jeff came up, and he said, hey, he said, uh, really felt like the Holy Spirit, you're supposed to pray for us. And um, he said, I, I could feel the power of God when you lifted your hand and you were just talking. He goes, and it just like made me woozy and dizzy. And that happened to me while I was there when a lady had prayed for me. But this is, was the greatest thing. We weren't looking for it. We didn't have our radar on. You, would, you know, <laughs> use my gifts, God. What can I do? It wasn't none of that. God just sent them. He drew them unto himself. Not because of me and not because of Marcy, but because of him and how he operates. And so we said, yeah, sure, we'll go outside. You know, and we prayed for him and his wife. And, and we have our gifts are different. We don't have, operate in the same gifts from the Holy Spirit, but we operate in the same spirit. And so, of course, I'm more prophetic, and I'm And so I, I pray first, and then Marcy prays second. Marcy actually did an impartation, um, I think, to him and her, if I, I'm right, right? Okay, so this is the thing. One of the things that Seth taught on joy was that at the end of the day, when you serve the Lord and you go to bed, you go to sleep in the joy of the Lord. Amen. And it isn't because we did anything. It was to know that the Spirit of God did something, and He used us. But it was to see the effects and the hunger and what God did. And so that night, going to sleep in the joy of the Lord, guess what you wake up with most of the time? The joy of the Lord. See, we think it's, woo, yay, yay, God, I, yeah, that's it, yes. That's great. That's part of it to me. I love it. You know, it just, yes, but it's in here. The kingdom of heaven's in here. And the word says that we got to heaven. There's a whole lot more scripture. I don't have them all. I have them all, but I don't have them for you today. That's why we're going to build on this. Do you realize 
that when you've received Christ, that the kingdom comes in. That now you walk in righteousness. Yes, do you fall, do you trip, do you do some things you wish you hadn't? Yes. But you keep going. Right. You repent. I don't know if you've got to repent every day, every night, every hour, repent. Continue to repent. God created your heart in me. I'm jealous of Tammy. God, I repent. That's not me. That's not the way that I want to be. I want her gift. No, God, that, no, I don't. I want you. You are the gift. You do what you want to do through me. The only gift I want is you. It is not what the byproduct is of that gift, but I want the gift. I don't need to do what she does. Lord, forgive me that, that I'm coveting what somebody else has. God, create a pure heart in me. Create a pure heart in me. Change me from the inside out. Because, Lord, I am significant in your eyes. I'm everything that you created me to be. And I don't have to be like anybody else, but I want to be like you created me to be so that I can be part of what your plan is. But when I'm running after to be like Tim, or I'm running after to be like Marvin, or I'm running after to be like Tammy, I am shutting down the joy of the Lord, his peace and his righteousness, because I'm in myself. Huh. Come on, church. I want people to be drawn I want people to come running. I want people to get healed. I want people to get over all their intestinal issues. Maybe if you're having stomach issues, it's a spiritual issue, right? You need to be flushed and get rid of your junk. Get rid of your narcissist, your Jezebel spirit. Get rid of that religious, religious poo. Flush it. Get rid of it. You know, a lot of times what's happening in the natural, it coincides, and there's a parable, it coincides with what's happening in the spiritual. I have found many times in my life something that's ailing me physically is something that's happening to me spiritually. When Marcy started having trouble with her eyes, I knew immediately that it was the enemy coming to steal her vision in the spirit realm. This can be taken care of in the natural realm. But it was the Lord revealing that, hey, you're a seer. I use you. The devil is trying to get you distracted with a physical problem. When in reality, there's also a spiritual problem. Let's take care of both of them. Amen. Both of them. I don't know what your problems are today, but I know that Jesus came to make us free. Yeah. I know that, that he is all righteousness, that he is all peace, and he's all joy, and he wants to give it to us. But it's in the Holy Spirit. So if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you said, oh, yeah, I asked Jesus, and in my heart was, I can't, but I, I don't really understand that. Well, today's a good day. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because when you receive Christ, this is what the Word says. You get a brand new spirit. Amen. See, we're all born into sin with a dark spirit, and that thing is there. It drives you. But when you receive Christ, it says in Ezekiel 36, that you get a new spirit. Amen. And now the Holy Spirit, because that new spirit is the one without sin. Just It's like this. It's not like, oh, here I am, new spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. No. Boom. Done. Instead of I, snap. It's done. Immediately from your heart. You want him. You want to be part of the kingdom of heaven. You want him to change you from the inside out. You don't got to understand. You don't need to go to school. You let the Holy Spirit you get involved. You get in a church. You can start reading the word. You start worshiping. Understand that God loves you. Amen. Be one with him. He'll do it. And the word says, listen, I'll give you a new heart. I'm going to take out that heart of stone. And I'm going to give you a heart of flesh that's Amen. pliable so that you can take my word, so that you can receive the goodness of the kingdom of heaven that I have. And now I'm going to manifest who I am in you. Instead of that hard heart that you've been trying to minister through, I'm going to give you a new heart. Amen. And then he says, I'm going to cause you to change. Amen. Yes. Yes. He's caused me to change. Dave, Dave's like, I don't want to pastor, but this is what I'm doing. I don't want to pastor, but this is what I'm doing. That's exactly what it needs to happen. Your flesh is like, I don't want to give that up. I don't want to do that anymore. But the spirit of the living God starts to control you more. And it's like, I'm done. Okay, God, I'm going to try. But now I say, Dave, get prayed for today. Make sure you get prayed for today. Because you're, you, you made a prophetic act. You're stepping out in obedience. Let us undergird you with prayer. Let's just help you get there. Let's just cover you. And, and then stay in Christ. 
stay in his peace. When you start to lose your peace, go back. Remember, in Romans 14, 17, it says, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. It's not eating and drinking. It's not drugging. It's not sex. What is it? It's righteousness. It's peace. It's joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's what we get. Mm -hmm. I had him from a little girl but didn't know him. I ran to the altar every week to get saved. And I meant it in my heart. It says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died for you. He was born without sin and died for you and took your sin. Amen. You shall be saved. I just explained the holy transformation that takes place upon salvation. Let him cause you to change. Let him do all that hard work. We just have to say, yes, God. Yes, God, I'm going to raise my hallelujah. I'm going to raise up. I'm not going to be in the ash anymore. I'm not going to be in the pool. I, I, it's okay. I'll have a ball. I'll let you do what. I'll, I'll deal with it when it comes because I need it. I need my system flushed sometimes. I mean, seriously, in the spirit. Sometimes I need my system flushed. And I'm not religious. But even being not religious, you can become religious. Yeah. Being not traditional, you can become traditional. Yeah. You're just your own new tradition. Yeah. You got to stay clean. Yes. Yeah. And you have to let him do it. Amen. Jehovah seek canoe. The Lord our righteousness. And so here I am. And I am in him. This is what God sees. Do you know that, you guys? He says, when you stand before the Father, this is who he sees. We're in him. And he is in us. And we become one. Amen. Doubt and unbelief in this room has got to go in the name of Jesus. Right. Grief needs to leave yeah. now in the name of Jesus. Right. Self-hatred has got to leave now in the name of Jesus. You may not dominate the minds and the lives of the people sitting in this room or hearing my voice today. God says repent. Maybe we need to repent of some thoughts that we've been hanging on to that have led us away from God instead of to God. Like God just doesn't care about me. That's a lie. But if you embrace it, you give power to it. Well, I'm just not like everybody else. You're not supposed to be. Get over yourself. Don't believe that lie. You're unique. You're wonderfully made. Amen. You're the apple of his eye. And he loves you. Yes. Amen. He's got a big tree with a lot of fruit. And I'm one. And so are you. Amen. It's all his fruit. It's all his labor. It's all his love. We're the byproduct of him. And we want people to come to us because we walk in the image because it's who we really are in the righteousness of him, in the peace of him. Why are you so peaceful? I don't know. It's God. <laughs> it's Jesus. How come you're not so grumpy? Well, because I don't let that stuff bother me anymore because it's not eternal. That's what I had to keep telling myself on, on Thursday. It's not eternal. Does it matter? It's not eternal. It's just my, my personality, my attitude, the way that I am. It's, it's not eternal. Really, am I going to let this affect something that is so eternal to me and that gives me so much life and so much joy? Or am I going to sit in that poo? Or am I going to let go of it? Amen. I feel like this morning the Lord... First of all, I believe that there is a, I believe by the Spirit of God that there's at least one person in here that has never heard the message um, before about what salvation really is. And now that you have an understanding, you have an ability to receive, I believe that it happened to you right there sitting in your seat like, oh, wow, wow, okay, God. I want to see you today. And not because I want to tell you anything. I just want to be your witness and, and maybe pray for you and walk you through something. But I believe that every one of us could have something in this room about repenting from receiving 
maybe something that it's been controlling our lives now and it's because we've agreed with it and we figure well if I can't beat it I might as well join it well you can beat it in Christ Amen. because victory is his name Amen. I believe that we need the joy of the Lord I believe we need to study that out and we're going to but what it's going to do is it's going to cause change and it's going to be exciting and you're going to jump for joy because you're really going to have it and you're not just going to have it part time it's going to be a way of life because the kingdom of heaven doesn't leave you it's there but if you don't tap into it and you stay a grumpy Christian you're going to stay a grumpy Christian but nobody wants grumpy Christian and not that you don't have moments because I do Right, Tammy? <laughs> Tammy's traveled with me before. It happens. But she looks past that because she sees the joy and the peace and the righteousness of me way more than all my junk. She loves me and is compassionate because of Christ in her. And that's how we need to be with people. It's hard, especially if we're control freaks. Get over that. Don't be controlling. It's wrong. It's self. There's a difference of, of being an administrator and making sure things are done and they need to be done in excellence and that kind of thing. But like it becomes your burden. It's time to lay it down because it's robbing your joy because you think you got to control it and it's all about you and you're the one and you're the one and you're the one. No. He's the one. Amen. It's not your burden. It's his. He died for it. Don't let it rob you of your joy. Amen. Stand up with me, please. Thank you. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Father God, thank you that you are are. My, righteousness, my righteousness, my peace, my peace and, my joy. and my joy. I receive it all today, I it all today. and I ask you to forgive me, I you to forgive me. Where, I have out where I have stepped out of this place with you. Forgive me for being selfish and self-centered. Self forgive me, God, forgive me, God. For, not for not looking to you and knowing that you died to give me freedom. To give me freedom. And, I receive your your and I receive your love today. And I receive that joy today. And I want you to change me, God, from the inside out so that people are attracted to the kingdom of heaven that lives inside of me. They're not attracted to my problems. They're not attracted to my critters. But they're attracted to the love, the peace, the joy from the kingdom of heaven, the righteousness. I want to give it to them, God. I don't want to give them my junk. I want to give them you. I want them to see you. And this morning, I receive you to a great degree. I lay my flesh down. I lay myself down at the foot of the cross. And God, have your way. I'm here. Forgive me. And Father, thank you for forgiving me. And now this is, we're going to say this together. But there is a huge unforgiveness for self in here today. And it has blocked you. It has stopped you. It has knocked you off your feet when things were even going good. Hmm. If God, the creator of the universe, who gives life, who called you into existence and me, can forgive us for the most hellacious sins yeah. here on earth. Yeah. And one sin is not greater than another. Sin is sin. Right. He says, today, you need to forgive yourself Amen. so that you can be made free. Amen. 
So repeat after me, Father God, Father God I thank you. I thank you for dying on the cross, on the cross. And, taking the and taking the sin that I've been carrying. That I've been carrying. And, I right and I right now forgive myself. And I release it all to you. And I it all to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, so what we're going to do... Um, we're going to actually, this is going to be an upbeat song, obviously. Uh, we're going to close with verses, a uh, uh, whoo song. Um, what I want you to do, if you have prayed some of these things today, would you please come up? And this is a prophetic act. In other words, you've said it, it's done. But now I want you to see yourself come up, write down those things, and put that in that basket today. And when you put that in the basket before you walk away from that cross today, I want you just to do this. Lord, I receive it all now Amen. and walk away. Just do that today. Come on up. You can start right now because, yeah, like almost every one of us need to do this today. We got plenty of time. We're going to do a whole this song. This young man right yeah. here in the middle. What's your name again? Yeah, you. Me? Yeah. Ryan. So, Ryan, this is what I, and I did say this up there, but it's in John 10, 10, and the Lord says that the, that the devil does not come to you except to, to kill to steal, sorry, to steal, to kill and destroy. So he doesn't come to you except to do those things. But Jesus says that he has come to give you life. And he says, you know that, but sometimes you like, you teeter in that, you know, because you're, um, you are, I, I, I hate to say these kinds of words, but a little strong headed. And, um, but, but the Lord says that he sees beyond your strong headedness, that he sees right to the heart of who you really are. And that for you to really grab a hold of that scripture, because you're going to start to recognize some attacks in your life that you, you're like, what just happened to me? How did this happen? How did I get there? And the Lord says, if you start applying this scripture to your life, you're going to, the enemy will be revealed where he's coming in and constantly getting you to fall down because Jesus says that, that he has come to give you life, that we would have life and that we would have it more abundantly. So you have life, but he wants you to have it more abundantly. So that's for you this morning. Um, and then this young lady right here in the middle, what was your name again? Warren. Warren. So Warren, this is a scripture that is in Isaiah 54, 17. You'll be able to get these words. Um, they won't be on Facebook Live, but you'll be able to get them. I'll cut them. They'll come on the end of the service on this date on YouTube, okay? So... Um, because this is for you. The Lord says that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. And what that means is there's actually weapons that are being formed against you. And it's not anything that you've asked for. It's not anything that you've, that you've like, you, you deserve. It's just the enemy. And he's forming weapons against you. But God says that they're not going to prosper. That he has given you life and he's called you into existence. He says he's seen you kicking in your own blood. And he called you to live. And the enemy wanted to snuff you out. But God's seen that. And he said, live. You shall live, Warren. This is not going to take you out. These are weapons that are forming against you. And he says, every tongue in Isaiah 54, every tongue which rises against you in judgment, that, that you shall condemn. That doesn't mean that you're going to condemn, condemn. But your life will condemn their words because they won't prosper in your life because you are a daughter of the king called by him and set apart for such a time as this. So that's for you this morning. So, um, and then um, right there, what was your name again? Brian. 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 And then is there a Keith in here? Keith? Okay. So Keith and Ryan, this is for you. Um, it says fear not. For I'm with you. And I don't know if you fight with anxiety or fear or fear of man. It can be any types of fear. But Jesus says, fear not for I am with you and don't be dismayed because I am your God. You have not done something so awful that, that you cannot have my love because I love you regardless. And he says, you've not done anything or wandered away so far that you're not able to come back because I'm there. He says, if you stay attached because he, he, he is... He is, 
he's the tree and we're the branches and we need to stay connected. So it's going to involve some choice in your life. And But he says for you not to fear that it's not too late. Like, no, it's not too late. I know this from my own life. God uses me and I came out of the world and I was a big hot mess. But now I'm a hot mess for the kingdom of heaven. And God can use a life that we think we've so destroyed because we get into fear. And God is telling you both today and anybody else that wants to receive this word, fear not. I'm with you. I see you. I will get you through this. Keep your eyes on me. It's going to be okay. He says, I will strengthen you. Joy. I will strengthen you. The joy of the Lord. The kingdom of heaven that is within you. I will strengthen you, says the Lord. I will do it. I will help you. God says, I will help you. This is in Isaiah 41.10. I will help you. And he says, I, being God, will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. You don't have to do anything but let him love you. And that's what I'm hearing this morning for you. Amen. Amen. And where is Ellen Best's daughter-in-law? Right there. Okay, and so um, God says to tell you that he has given you authority to trample over scorpions and serpents, serpents and scorpions, and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And so that's in Luke 10, 19, and I feel like God is saying that don't let some of the things that are happening around and about you in life, don't let them have any authority. Don't, give, don't let them have your faith. You keep your faith in Christ, even though it doesn't look the way it's supposed to and be the way that it's supposed to. He says, you have authority to take authority over all those things. Now, I know it says scorpions and things like that, but it can be anything. It can be your finances. It can be health. It can be your family. It can be your job. It can be anything. God has given you authority. When the enemy comes in and tries to steal from you, you stand strong in him. He says that you have an authority from heaven that you haven't even tapped into yet. But when you start to tap into that authority, of heaven, you are going to rock some worlds around you by the spirit of the living God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Kathy, God says you're to dance. God says you're to dance. That you don't have to worry whether you have rhythm or not because it's a beautiful dance before the Lord. And he says the more you dance, the more freedom you're going to step into because you're going to come out of your mind and you're going to come out of your fear of man and you're going to step into the freedom and the love of God because you dance for one person, the audience of one, being Christ the King, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He says the enemy's coming against your life in oppression for a long time. Oppression comes from people. They try to oppress you, change you, not let you be who God has created you to be. And God says it is time to rip out of that oppression and to dance before the Lord. The more that you dance before the Lord, and you don't have to do it here. You can do it at home. You put that music on. You crank it. And you ask the Lord, what songs do you want to hear? What, what songs do I dance for before you? They might be radical. They could be rap. They could be worship. They could be anything. You just let God be released in you, and you're going to walk into the power of the Holy Spirit that wants to surge through you. No more fear, says the Lord. Dance. Amen? Amen. Okay, Marcy, can you stand up here real quick with Dan? And um, is uh, April gone? April's here. April, can you come up here? Can you stand next to Marcy and Dan? Um, I, you guys are supposed to pray today. Now, I know we're, we're done, guys, but I really believe that a few people need prayer today. You need agreement. You need a touch from the Lord. And so I want to give you opportunity for that. I realize you went up and took care of what you needed to. And I'm talking really fast because I know I'm running late. But um, I really feel like... Like, God wants to bless you today. Some of you are here, and, you know, you're depressed. You, you have fought depression, and this message hasn't hit home yet, but it will. It will. Because, see, you're, not he you're hearing it with your ears or maybe in your flesh when God is imparting it into your spirit. And so he wants you to know that. But if you need prayer today, will you please go up and let these beautiful people pray for you by the Spirit of God? Yeah, go ahead right now. And uh, Sherry, I want you to know that God is uh, going to let you see him in a new way. It's like you see him, you know him, but you're going to start to see him in a new way as well. And that joy is going to start to bust loose in you. Amen. Hallelujah. And you, can I, Craig, can Greg, will you come up here and pray for this young man? I, will you just be in agreement with me in heaven? And will you put your hands, just put your hands on him. Thank you. I know, guy. I know. I'm, I don't mean to oh, make you turn right. I, I just want you to uh, just...
pray for him and I want depression to leave. I want depression to leave. No more depression. No more fear of man. I just want it gone and I believe God's called you to pray that for him. If you would just take a knee and pray for him right now real quick. You can turn that music up a little bit. I'm going to pray and then you guys can be dismissed that need to go. We've got the fellowship next door. Thank you for hanging in with me today. Um, I don't normally go this long, but God wants to do something in our lives today. And if you need prayer, you get prayer. I'll put another prayer team up there. We ain't leaving until we, until we leave change today. Amen. So God bless your people. Be with them. Keep them safe. Thank you, God, that you love us. Thank you, Lord, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And, Father God, it's righteousness, peace, and joy. And, Lord, I call heaven to earth in the Holy Spirit. And those that may not know you today, I pray them into the kingdom of heaven that they would receive you today. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. amen. Let's stand up. And you guys are released.